Good today. So Luke chapter 15, do y'all have it? Amen. Luke chapter 15. And um, before I read it, before I read it, uh, th this, is, this is really, uh, this subject is about, uh, most of y'all familiar with it, I think it's the most well-known parable in the whole Bible, and it's called the parable uh, or the prodigal son, the par parable about the prodigal son. And, and we told you uh, last week that the reason they use this word prodigal, this word prodigal just simply means wasteful. It just simply means wasteful, okay, wasteful. And so he got, he got the title of the prodigal son uh, because he, he wasted some things, okay? But, uh, but this whole parable really is, uh, when, when you really look at it, uh, you know, you, we can't truly begin our journey of connecting with our loving father and experience this wholeness and this healing that he got with, for us, amen, first for our, with ourselves, uh, our families, our church, our community, those closer to us, until we first come to ourself. And uh, so this morning, I want to title this message, amen, have you come to yourself? Hallelujah. Have you come to yourself? Okay. Have you come to yourself? So it's not just about two sons. It's actually, I mean, one son. It's about two sons. And it's about a loving father. Now, we don't have time to deal with the second son. So we'll just deal with the first son, okay? We're going to just deal with the first son today. And, uh, and Jesus is really trying to convey a message to the scribes and Pharisees uh, concerning their accusation about his behavior. Jesus always got accused of uh, associating or being friends or fellowshipping uh, with, 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 with sinners. That, that's what they always said. Amen. He's, he's a friend of sinners. Okay. Now, um, it was bad enough that he welcomed them and taught them, but he even ate with them. And so the religious people always accuse Jesus, why would you hang out with these folks, right? Why would you, if, if you were sent from God, why would you be hanging out um, with these type of people? But one thing about Jesus, he attracted people. He attracted those that didn't know God. He attracted lost people. He attracted abandoned people. He attracted ostracized people. It was something about his message, amen, that drew people. It, it drew people. It was something about those people that were alienated and separated from the who's who's. It really drew them to him, okay? So that's what we're going to talk about this morning, this lost son, and about coming to himself. Amen. Let's pray real quick. Father, we love you so much, and we thank you, and we bless you for this time today. Thank you for your word today, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for those that have gathered here today, Lord God. Anoint our ears to hear, anoint our hearts to receive uh, the seed of your word, Lord God. We thank you for it today, Father. And Lord, we praise you for a word in season for them that's weary, Lord God. Thank you for bringing encouragement and healing and hope to everyone today, Lord God. We know your word never goes out void, but it always accomplishes what you sent it forth to do. And it shall prosper in the thing where until to you sent it today, Lord God. And we give you praise for that today, Lord. And we thank you and we declare we'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. So in Luke 15, what you notice is um, that with these type of people, you know, Jesus understood and tried to help them. Uh, they criticized these people and kept them at a distance. The Pharisees loved the law, amen, but they didn't love the laws. Jesus loved the, the laws in spite of the law. So this song this morning he was singing about, you know, uh, the, the God that never leaves the one behind, the three parables in this particular chapter is all about leaving the one behind. You know, it's, it, that's what it's about, going after the one. Going after the one. And, and what this whole chapter is all about is a loving father that want to send a message to you and a message to me that no matter where you are, no matter where you've been, no matter what you're doing, no matter where you came from, I still love you. Amen. I'm still a loving father. I still want fellowship with you. Yes. Amen. I, I would love for us to be reconciled. And I'm watching you. I'm, I'm watching you. Yes. Amen. And I'm longing for fellowship with you. Yes. You see that? That's the Father's heart. He's always longing for fellowship um, with us. You say, well, why would God want a fellowship with me? Because he created you. Yes. The same way you want a fellowship with your son. 
the same way you want to fellowship with your daughter, your grandchildren, whoever it may be, God wants fellowship with you. You see that? He wants fellowship with you. But, but there are entities that I won't get into this morning uh, that the Bible talks about. Amen. We've been talking about this on Wednesday night. We're dealing with spiritual warfare. But th- there, are, there, there, are, there, there are adversaries, demonic powers, that, that, that will do anything, anything in their power to keep you separated from God. That's the whole point, to keep you separated from God. They don't like church. They don't like, they don't like preachers. They don't, they don't like saints. They don't like prayer. They don't like the word. None of those things, nothing that relates to God. And what the enemy comes to do, the Bible says, is kill, steal, and destroy. And he certainly wants to destroy our relationship with God. But I'm here to remind you, amen, that God, amen, listen, God loves you and he wants fellowship with you. Amen. Regardless of where you are in life. So the first thing here we see in first fifth verse, uh, chapter 15 was the lost sheep. Do y'all see that? It says, let me read these first two verses. It says, then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. Do you see that? The tax collectors, which was the worst of the worst, and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribe complained, saying, this man receives sinners and he eats with them. You know, religious spirits always complaining about something, aren't they? Always complaining about something. Amen. Always complaining about something. And so Jesus had to take this. These parables really were to the scribes and Pharisees. He was trying to give them revelation. Amen. Of um, why he ate with tax collectors and sinners. He wanted, him, he wanted them to understand, just like he want me and you to understand, praise God, that, um, you know, sometimes we're, this lo- we're the ones that's lost, right? So listen at this, listen at this. The lost sheep. I told you last week, I said, sheep easily get lost. They easily get lost. And you might be lost this morning, alienated, separated from God, no direction, uh, wherever you are in life. You see that? Uh, But why do sheep get lost, natural sheep? And Jesus, the analogy Jesus always uses when it comes to saints, when it comes to the church and and, and the pastor, is sheep and shepherd. He uses that terminology, sheep and shepherd. There's a reason why sheep need a shepherd. Now, Jesus is the chief, chief shepherd, right? But God gives us shepherds. Matter of fact, he told Israel, I give you shepherds after my own heart. I give you shepherds. That's what David was. He was a man after God's own heart. So a shepherd, the thing you want to know about a shepherd is, most times they'll have the heart of the father, and they'll have an overwhelming concern for the sheep, for the people of God. Okay? So this is the analogy Jesus is giving here. But let me tell you why sheep get lost. Number one, they have no sense of direction. When I say no sense of direction, I mean no sense of direction. I mean, they can see the flock, but they can't get to it once they get separated from it. They don't have this built-in honing system like most animals, like birds, like dogs. You know, your dog can get lost for seven days. It, it'll, <laughs> listen. You know, some little female run across in heat, amen, he gone. Let me tell you that now, he gone. Praise God, he gone. I'm telling you that now, he love you, but he gone. Praise God. And, uh, but he can be gone for seven days, but he'll find his way back home. You see. Uh, birds, fish, all of them, they go thousands of miles, amen, and travel in different seasons, and they find their way back home. Sheep have no sense of direction. They can't find their way back even if they see it. It's like they can't get to it. Why? Because they're easily distracted. They are easily distracted. Sound like anybody you know? (laughs) They are so easily distracted. They are very fearful. And they're very curious. So anything grabs their attention. And when sheep do get lost, they don't try to find their way home. Do you know why they don't try to find their way home? Because they hunker down and they wait for the shepherd to find them. They will lay there and wait for the shepherd to find them. Do you see that? They don't try to find their way home. That's why Jesus said, you didn't choose me. 
I chose you. See, some of you think you got saved, but you didn't got saved. He drew you. He called you. He's anointed you. He appointed you. From the foundations of the world, he predestined you for such a time as this. We was just hunkered down in the club. Amen. We was hunkered down in the club. Just doing our thing. But the Father was looking for you. Amen. See, hallelujah. Because I didn't have sense enough to come to God on my own. He had to come get me. Amen. I said, God had to come get me. And let me tell you this morning, he'll come see about you. You might, be, you might be hunkered down in depression this morning. You might be hunkered down in debt. You might be hunkered down in guilt and shame and regret and all of these things. But I'm telling you this morning, amen, the shepherd is looking for you. The shepherd is looking for you. Praise God. Amen. The second parable here is about the parable of a lost coin. And he asked the question, said, what woman, having ten silver coins, is she losing one, does not light a lamp, in verse 8, sweep the house and search until she finds it, right? And then she calls all her friends, that's what they did with the sheep. Once he got the sheep, they brought everybody together. He left the 99, went after the one, and they began to rejoice. Same thing with the coin, amen? Amen. She lost one, amen, and so... She, she, she called her neighbors and friends, amen, saying, come help me find this coin. Now, this coin that, that, that she wore, married Jewish women wore what's called a headband with 10 silver coins on it. And what it is, it's, it's slightly what we would, it's like a wedding ring for us, okay? It just, it just signified uh, that she was a wife. She was married. So when she lost this coin, um, she, she wanted to do everything she could to look for it because it was so valuable to her. Do you see that? Did you know Americans throw away up to $68 million in coins every year? Did you know that? $68 million in coins every year, but not on purpose. But not on purpose. Coins just get lost. <clears throat> they get lost. Y'all got lost coins everywhere. They're under your car seat, under your bed, <laughs> in between the sofa couch. They all back under the sofa couch, <laughs> out in the front yard, in the washing machine. That's right, amen. Y'all got lost coins everywhere. And if you look close enough, you might, you might get some of that $68 million that's missing every year, praise God. But you know where most of that money end up at? The landfill. Just up at the landfill. Amen. Just get thrown away because it's lost. Well, let me tell you, coins get lost because of carelessness of another. Carelessness of another. And there's so many lost people, amen, they're in the situation they're in because of the carelessness of another. Maybe it was an authority in your life. Maybe it was a parent. Maybe it was whoever, amen, but there was, it was the carelessness of another. You see, and because of their carelessness, you ended up in a situation you didn't want to be in. You didn't plan to be in it. But nevertheless, you ended up lost. Do you see that? You ended up lost. But thirdly is a lost son. A sheep is one thing. A corn is another. But a lost child. It's a whole nother ball game. Amen. It's a horse of a different color. It's a big deal. And so three words summarize this. The lost are found and rejoice. But secondly, God loves lost people and he wants to find them and he wants to bring them home. God wants to bring them home. I said God want to bring them home. He wants to bring them home. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move kind of quick here because uh, we, we're going to have the baby dedication. But there are six stages to restoration in this young man's life once he left home. Six stages. Let me read this real quick in verse 11. A certain man had two sons. The young of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to him his livelihood. Verse 13, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all and he had, there arose a famine in the land, and he began to be in want. 
And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the paws that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, when he came to himself, have you come to yourself? He said, how many of my father's hired servant have bread enough and to spare and I perish in hunger? I will arise and go to my father and he, I will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him, had compassion on him, ran, fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe, <clears throat> put it on him, put a ring on his finger, and sandals on his feet. You see, servants didn't have none of this. This is sonship. This sonship. And bring the fatted calf. Don't get that skinny one out there, amen. That one that told me he don't eat no, no meat and potatoes and stuff. All he wanted some salads and, uh, and wheat grass and all that. Praise. He said, get that fatty calf. Praise God. Hallelujah. And bring the fatty calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. And they began to be merry. Praise God. That's good news. Amen. That's good news. So these six stages was number one, he rebelled. Number two, he recognized. Thirdly, he repented. Fourthly, he returned. Fifthly, he was restored. And number six, that was rejoicing. That was rejoicing. Thank you, Lord. That was rejoicing. Rebelled, recognized, repented, returned, restored, and rejoices. This is the stage of getting from where you are to where God want to get you to. No matter where you are. No matter where you are. And I believe there's a lesson here to be learned for all of us here today. Praise God. The word prodigal means wasted, and he wasted three things. He wasted all of his money. He wasted all of his time. And he wasted some meaningful relationships with his family, with his friends, with his father, all that. He missed the impartation and the spiritual and emotional growth that he could have received from his father. Could have learned the business, you know, but it set him back. It set him back because he said, I want my portion now. I want what you've got for me now. And sometimes we can ask God for things prematurely, or the Bible said we can ask amiss. We ask it upon our lust. We ask it upon what I want. It's not necessarily what God wants. When you pray, pray the will of God. Lord, if it be thy will. If it be thy will. You see, sometimes we can try to fulfill the call of God on our lives too soon. We can move out prematurely, and we miss so much. And that's what this son did. He, he wasted all of his time. Each and every one of us have 1,440 minutes. When you wake up, amen, uh, in a 24-hour day, we're given all the same amount of time. What are you doing with your time? Amen. Are we using it wisely or are we wasting it? You see. And uh, so, so, of course, these relationships are so vitally important. Now, let, number one, why did he leave the father's house? Well, he left because of rebellion. He left and went into what the Bible calls a far country. And a far country is first in our hearts. You don't have to leave home. You just leave in your heart. People do it in homes. People do it in marriages. People do it in relationships. People do it in churches. Amen. They don't leave the church. They just leave in heart. They go from the first row to the third row. I call this backsliding in the church. Amen. <laughs> then they're on the fifth row. <laughs> then they're on the eighth row. So let's see you on the back row this morning. Amen. Let me see. Dace and Arnie Cat. They must be in a backslidden condition. Amen. Let me see. Where y'all at back there? Arnie Cat. Sir Charles, I hope you all right. Amen. But anyway, <laughs> 
Praise God. Amen. And so, so, so when he asked for that inheritance, that's equivalent to telling his father, Father, I wish you was dead so I can get what belongs to me. You see that? So I can live as I please. And the Bible said he spent his inheritance on reckless and extravagant living. He spent all of his inheritance, amen, I mean in no time. Praise God. Now he was in rebellion. And I'm going to tell you something about rebellion in your heart. It'll always push you away from the father's house. It'll always push you away from people that God sends in your life to maybe be a blessing to your life. It, it, it pushes away from God-ordained authorities. It, it, it pushes you away from the things we really need. We just don't want it, you see. And we rebel against it. We rebel against it. Amen. The Bible, the Bible talks about rebellion, amen. And sometimes he said it's like the spirit of witchcraft. Do you see that? It can be equivalent to witchcraft. That's what happened with Saul, praise God. And you don't want that happening to you. You see that? See, rebellion means I'm dissatisfied in heart. And he was probably harboring offense against his father. Are you harboring offense against anybody this morning? If you're offended with somebody, if you're holding unforgiveness in your heart toward people, you're probably rebelling against them. You don't want to be around them. You don't want to hear anything they got to say. You see that? Even if, it's, if they're saying something that's good and saying something that's right and saying something that's helpful. He was dissatisfied in the heart. One control of his own life, not wanting to live by God's mandates. You see that? No understanding of God's structure of submission. Thinking someone in authority has wronged you. For some people, the only way to get them back, I told you last week, is to let them go. And that's what the father did. He didn't argue. He didn't debate. He said, if you want it, here it is. Okay, you can go. And sometimes the only way you'll get them back is to let them go. You got to learn sometime how to give people the gift of goodbye. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Listen, if you don't want me, <laughs> Amen. Let the donut hit you. Praise God. Stop chasing people that don't want you anyway. I mean, they don't, you're, you're not going to, folks, I don't want to get into this, praise God. It's a get into it. <laughs> if they want you, they want you. Amen. They're going to get you if they want you. If they want to be around you, they're going to want to be around you, you see. But when you try to force people and make people and, and do like this fella, I got money, I got this, to try to buy people's friendship and buy people love and, and submitting yourself to ungodly things and, and trying to appease people all the time, you're going to end up just like this guy. You're going to be spiritually, emotionally, and financially bankrupt. It's going to always leave you bankrupt. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, when the blessings of God is on your life, it'll chase you down, amen? You, you ain't got to chase something down trying to get something. You'll attract the blessing. You'll attract the right people at the right place at the right time. And there'll be people that will impart into your life. They'll lift you up. They'll build you up. They'll pray for you. They'll help you. They'll stand with you. And they'll be there for you. Stop chasing people every time you get in trouble when you call them. They like, eh, eh, yeah, eh, I ain't got no time for that. Eh, eh, eh. Uh, well, see if you can call Gertrude. Eh, maybe, maybe she can help you. I called you. <laughs> Always got an excuse. Why you can't help me? Why you can't be there for me? Do you see that? Praise God. And uh, so, so, so I just want to say, hey man, so let me tell you something. Some people attitude, you're not going to be able to fix it. If they see you as the problem, you're not going to be able to fix it. Okay. Now, one thing about prodigal children, now some of you may have some prodigal children. I'm not saying don't go after your kids. I'm not saying don't, don't pray for your kids. I, I'm, I'm not telling you don't, you know, keep believing God for the breakthrough for your kids, you know what I mean? I don't have time to get into all that this morning, but I always, always, always go after them. You see what I'm saying? And be big enough to say you're sorry. Be big enough to repent if you need to repent or whatever you need to do. Amen. Because parents, guess what? You're not right all the time. Let me talk to this side. Parents, guess what? You're not right all the time. Come on, Rachel. You know I'm telling the truth. Glory to God. You ought to be on your feet and waving your hands. Be like, now you're preaching, Pastor. But I see your parents sitting over there, so you don't want to say nothing. Amen. Glory. We can talk out the church. We'll talk out the church. Glory to God. 
Amen. Amen. But sometimes we miss it, guys, and we got to get it right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But this father was always looking out for his son, always looking for his son. And I really believe he broke his father's heart. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't it odd how we oftentimes value other people, places, and environment from afar off and never come to appreciate the things you got right at home? Yes. See? I can preach this message this morning to folks that's been coming here for years, and they'd be like, yeah, that's, that was a hard right message, Pastor, but go ahead and shut it down. Just shut it down. <laughs> I can call somebody in next week from California with a briefcase, amen, and an eight-piece suit on. <laughs> Come in here and say the same thing. Oh, Lord, man, they'd be like Bill up here, man. Folks be turning cockwheel, hanging from the Woo! I ain't never heard nothing like that. Hallelujah. Look at that. Praise God. What revelation. We've never heard anything on this wife. <laughs> and I can just give him everything I just said. Well, it's just like that, right? Isn't that right? So start to appreciate the people in your life. Amen. It's close to you, that's around you, that's blessing you, that's right there. Amen. I believe he did break his father's heart. Number two, the Bible said he came to himself. This might be all I get to cover today, saints of God. He came to himself. Thank you, Father. Now, I want to say this something about coming to yourself today. Okay? Uh, sometimes these, these little statements in your Bible can be greatly overlooked. Greatly overlooked. But there's something amazing about this statement, he came to himself. He came to himself, you see. Because um, until you reach this place in your life, you, you won't really, you know, enter into what God's got for you and really become what God wants you to become and do what God wants you to do. Because <clears throat> that there's a large portion of you, yourself, that's still lodging and in charge and, and thinking, you know, you're the fate of your life and I'm in control and I got it going on and I'm the man and all this and all this pride and all this stuff will still be operating in your life even though you might not know that. You might not know that. Now, I don't pray you got to eat with the hogs before you wake up. But, uh, <laughs> but if that's what it takes, Jesus said if your right hand offends you, cut it off. Now, I know that's hyperbole, right? But what he's telling you is the importance of it. The importance of it. If your right eye offends you, pluck it out. Whatever it is that's, that's creating this drag and this stag in, in your life and keep pulling you down into these dark places. He's saying do whatever you got to do to get rid of it. To get rid of it. You see, this young man, he, 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 was on the, he, he was out there, right? And things didn't turn out the way he expected. And some of you are living with disappointment. And, and you're still blaming other people. See, you ain't come to yourself yet. You, you got, you're blaming everybody. Hey, man, that's why they don't come to church. Well, them preaching and all that. Listen, don't worry about the preacher. Worry about you. I get so tired of that nonsense. I'm going to give an account of myself to God. You understand? I got to get to heaven just like you do. You see what I mean? If the preacher want to go to hell, that's his business. He can go. So stop worrying about this one. Somebody, well, I don't go to church because all them hypocrites down there. Well, we always got room for one more. Praise God. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> Y'all seen the Wizard of Oz, age? Come on in. Praise God. So after a season of being the life of the party, Hollywood lifestyle, wilding out with the boys, once the money got funny, the whiskey, the wine, the women, and the weed, and all the worldly friends all of a sudden left you high and dry. That's where it left him, amen. Left him high and dry. You see. Because sin will promise you freedom, but it'll only deliver you bondage. And brokenness. Let me say that again. Amen. That, 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 that lifestyle will promise you freedom, but it only delivers bondage and brokenness. It promises life, but it can't give you life. People can't give you life. Jesus said, amen, that I, I will give you life and life more abundantly. Life comes from the Father. And when you walk away from the Father's house... 
There ain't no life out there, saints. I don't care what they promise you. I don't care what the, you can't smoke enough weed to get rid of all that misery over you. Amen. It'll be there in the morning. Amen. You got to come out of these far countries, these far places that you think got so much to offer you. So much to offer you. Amen. But amen, but your life is in the father's house. He left home trying to find himself, but instead he lost himself. That's what he mean by loss. Loss. What does it mean to be lost? You don't know who you are. You have no clue who you are. How are you going to teach other people and you don't know who you are? How are you going to love somebody else and you don't love yourself? You understand what I'm saying, guys? In other words, the first deliverance is self-deliverance. And if you don't come to yourself, let me talk to this. I said, if you don't come to yourself, you won't be able to help nobody else. Hallelujah. It's got to start in you. Tell your neighbor, it got to start in you. Come on, tell them. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. It's got to start in you. The breakthrough in your family, it's got to start in you. The breakthrough in your marriage, it's got to start in you. The breakthrough in your finances, it's got to start in you. The breakthrough in your spirit, man, it's got to start in you. You holy key. Amen. Come on, I'm just waiting on the world to change. The world ain't going to change, folks. It's changing, but it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. But if you'll get back to the Father's house, it'll get better and better and better and better. It'll get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. You'll get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I had to get sick of me. I said, I had to get sick of me. I was sick and tired of me. I won't blame nobody. Amen. It, I was the problem. I was the problem. Oh, when I got sick of me, when I got tired of me, when I got tired of life, when I saw myself as the problem, when I saw the root was me, glory to God. Then I can say, Lord, I ain't worried about you doing this with that one and what, I ain't worried about this. I said, do something in me. Do something in me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, oh Lord, that need a breakthrough. It's me, oh Lord, that need a divine impartation and a touch from heaven. It's me. It's not my wife. It's not your husband. It's not the father, the mother, your past, all of that, God. Let him start it in you. Hallelujah. Because one thing about it, can't nobody hinder you but you. Hallelujah. You can't blame other people for that. Because, amen, if you being hindered, amen, it falls back on you. Because the Father is saying, I'm available. I'm available. Hallelujah. But if you leave God out, I'm telling you right now, enjoyment will become enslavement. That's his purpose. To enslave our hearts and enslave our minds and enslave our future and enslave our families but whom the sun set free come on guys Woo! it's free indeed talk to me guys hallelujah 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 I got tired of slapping hogs amen amen I was slapping them for real praise God some of y'all don't know what a hog is. You certainly don't know how to kill one. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You get you a hog, you try to ride him. Amen. You got to kill him and you get the ham. Amen. But uh, so, so, hold on, hold on, y'all. Don't get me thrown off here. Praise God. Amen. So what some people have to do, like this young man, instead of coming to himself, he had to end up in the hog pen. End up in the hog pen. Money gone. 
Friends gone. Girlfriends gone. Reputation gone. And killed the reputation of his family. I ain't got no family. Don't have nobody that love him. And the sad part is God put him in a position where nobody gave him anything. Don't you know that favor on your life ain't nothing but the goodness of God? That mercy on your life ain't nothing but the goodness of God. That grace on your life. Amen. That's why you got the low miss your hand. Because you got favor everywhere you go. Glory to God. But when God lifts that off of your life, don't you know nobody will give you anything? Nobody will help you. You can't even get a prayer through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. But I'm telling you, he ended up in the hog pen, thanks to God. Yeah, we're going to definitely have to end with this. And that's a terrible place for a young Jewish boy to be. Because pigs in the Bible, in the Old Covenant, were considered unclean. Amen. Very unclean. And um, so, in your Bible, it's a type and shadow of unclean spirits. That's what it's type and shadow of, you see. Of course, not only were they forbidden to eat, they were forbidden to touch. They were forbidden to touch. So it's, it's a type and shadow of an unclean spirit. Could it be that perhaps this fellow were either oppressed or obsessed by a demon and had opened himself up during these seasons of, of, of sex, drugs, and rock and roll? He had opened himself up to so many things, you see, that he gave too much place to the devil. And I ain't, you know, I, let me just say this while we're on the subject, amen. There's many ways that demons enter people, but this is three of them. This is three of them. Amen. You can say rock and roll, music, entertainment, whatever you want to call it. Even the first word of entertainment is what? That's what it's all about. I'm trying to get in you. I'm trying to put something in you. Amen. See, what they do, they, they make you laugh while they stabbing you in the back. It, it, it kind of, it's like this. <laughs> you understand what I mean? You, you laughing at your own demise. Or you jamming to your own demise. But it's getting in you. Your eyes and your ears. These eye gates, ear gates. That's how it gets in. That's how it gets in. So I'm sure he did a lot of partying. Amen. Amen. The drugs, of course, that's what I was saying. And the sex, of course, your body is a temple, so it's, it's a sacrifice. You're supposed to sacrifice your body to God. A living sacrifice. So when you give your body away, it's like an offering. That's like an offering. It's an offering. That's why a lot of people use their body to appease. This is one way you appease people that's putting pressure on you. You don't want them to walk out of your life. I'll, I'll sacrifice my body. I'll give my body to you. That ought to make you stick around. Are you kidding me? How did that turn out? I give my body to you. See, that's the enemy wants you to compromise everything. Amen. Wants you to compromise on everything. Hallelujah. Haven't done all the stand, stand, saints of God. Stand. Stand. What happens when you come to yourself? Let me close. You're hungry, but not for food. Because this hunger, food can't satisfy. Food can't satisfy. I'm talking about when you come to yourself. You say, oh, I just can't fast. Oh, you come to yourself, you'll be ready to fast. You'll want to fast. Because now you're ready to draw in. I believe this young man got set free in the hall pen when he came to himself. The second thing that happened, your spiritual eyes will come open. And as Paul said, those blind scales will begin to fall from your eyes. You're going to begin to see things you couldn't see before. Thirdly, your ability to think rationally and clearly is restored. The Bible says strongholds are patterns of thinking. That's what the enemy wants to control, your mind. It's all about the mind, imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. It wants you to think on everything except the Word of God. And so if he can control your thinking, he can control your life, he can control your decisions, he can control your tomorrow, all of these things. And so many people are walking around, their, mind are so, their minds are so clouded, they can't think rationally, and they can't think 
clearly. But when you come to yourself, you'll be able to do both. Fourthly, your attitude change. Your attitude change. How many know your attitude determines your altitude? And your attitude, you begin to see the truth of the matter. See, the truth of the matter. You don't need everybody. It's where the Holy Spirit began to show you things. He said, you don't need everybody to teach you this and teach you that. And come. You said, no, 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 that's not the truth. Amen. That's what they presented to me, but that's not really the truth. Number five, deception is removed. What I thought was the problem wasn't really the problem. What I thought was the problem wasn't really the problem. Number six, you're no longer blaming everybody else. It's not my supervisor. It's not my husband, not my wife, not my boss. It's not my pastor. You know, we get blamed for everything. Amen. But you say, it's me, Lord. It's me, Lord. You see that? It's me, Lord. Amen. We come into ourselves. In other words, you see yourself. You see yourself. See, for you all that look in the mirror and don't like what you see, that's God telling you. Listen, if you don't like your life, give it to me. That's what he's telling you. If you don't like it, give it to me. I'll, I'll make something beautiful out of it if you'll give it to me. You see, this is where you do a self-diagnosis. You recognize the area of your ways. You identify the what and the whys. And after you figure it out, guess what? You take responsibility for your actions. Hallelujah. And then you begin to move in the right direction. You do a 180. The boy said, I got to get out of here. What am I doing here in this hawk pit? My father got servants that live better than me. Hallelujah. You begin to make amends with all that are involved. Do you see that? You begin to make amends. Whatever, you, you like Zacchaeus. If I wronged any man, I'm going to make it right. Amen. I'm going I'm to make it right. And you're not afraid of saying, Father, King Jesus, precious Holy Spirit, sisters and brothers, I was wrong. I messed up. I mean, I messed up really bad. This is the son's prayer to his father. His father didn't even let him finish the prayer, but this is your prayer to God. I messed up really bad. And Father, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. Father, could you forgive me? Could you forgive me? Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I repent with my whole heart. My whole heart. My whole heart. Please receive me. Please receive my heartfelt forgiveness. Repentance. That's what's coming to yourself looks like. That's what it looks like. You see, thank you, Father. That's what it looks like. Thank you, Jesus. So I pray this was a blessing to you today. And, and thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Maybe you're not in the hog pen, but you say, I feel like I'm heading in that direction. I, I can smell it. I can't see it yet, but I can smell it. Amen. Or you say, you know what, Pastor? It, it ain't that bad, but I am living too far from the Father's house. I'm too far from the Father's house. Okay? Too far from the Father's house. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray today. You know, sometimes your hardships can help you to see not just your hunger but it helped him to see his despair his betrayal his loneliness his guilt he got to see it all 
But the good thing is he remembered how good his God is. And I want to remind you today as we pray how good your God is. Paul said this in Romans 2 and 4. Do you not know it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance? See. Now, I, I don't mean this in a critical way, but, but some of us, you haven't been in a place to where you really feel like you need God because you think you got it all in control. You got it all going on. But let me tell you something. If you ever hit rock bottom, if you ever find yourself in the hog pen, everybody else might forget about you. But if Jesus got to reach way down, and if he ever picks you up out of something that you saw no way out of, hallelujah, you're going to be like this son. Daddy, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not even worthy. I'm not even, thank you, God bless you. I'm not even worthy. You can, I'll sleep in the barn. I'll sleep in the backyard. I don't even have to be a son. Just let me walk on the ground. I'll take whatever. Just take me back. Hallelujah. I'm not looking for any big thing. I just come to be a blessing. I come to say thank you. I come to give you glory. I come to praise you for your goodness. I just come to say, God, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't thank you enough. I couldn't praise you enough. You healed my body. You brought my children home. You broke the curse off of my life. You set me free. Father, I thank you. 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 Let's pray today. Guys, if that's you, I want to encourage you to meet me here at the altar, amen. If you say, you know what? I done came to myself. I have come to myself. I have come to the end of myself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God's ready to restore you. God's ready to restore you. Are you ready for restoration? Are you ready for more? Are you ready for a fresh touch from God? Come on, let's go quickly because uh, we got to get the baby dedication. That's you today. Come on, right there where you are. Don't even think about it. Just get up and say, you know what, Lord? I'm ready for that. I'm ready to break free. I'm ready to let go. I'm ready to come to myself. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead, somebody pray for my baby here. Amen. Who else? Anybody else this morning? Thank you, Father. Let me tell you about that sheep that hunkers down once they get lost. The enemy don't want you to be found. He don't want you to be found. Do you see that? He'll give you every excuse there is to keep you where you are. But Jesus is a good shepherd. And guess what? He's looking for you. He's waiting for you. He's calling you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You know, a lot of my peers I grew up with, they never made it out the hawk pen. They got stuck in it. They became comfortable in it. They began to lay down in it. And some of them died in it. You know? Never got out. Never got out. 